Hi, Steve Averill. I'm back with Synth Project 02. Today I'm going to look at several modulation options and portamento. Here we go. I'm going to start with uh, frequency modulation or pitch modulation, and I'll do that by changing this first oscillator. We were using two oscillators here. I'm going to take this one out of the loop. That's the sound of one oscillator right there, and I'm going to do modulation with this first oscillator in low frequency oscillator modes. Okay, so the way I'm going to change this is I'm going to take the first oscillator away from the mixer. I'm going to grab the triangle output and put it into the linear frequency. And uh, first, uh, we'll listen to this just uh, this is what it sounds like without any modulation. And let's see what it sounds like with extreme modulation. But I'll turn this linear frequency level up and we get pitch modulation. Change the frequency of that, and that's what we get. We get the, all, the, all the great sci-fi sounds. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this thing into a nice vibrato. So the best thing that we can do is to turn this into um, something very subtle and just sort of right frequency and the right level. So. I like that frequency, but that's too much vibrato, so I'm just going to turn this vibrato down right in this range. There you go. Right now I want to take a look at pulse width modulation. What I'm going to do to make that work is to take the low frequency oscillator and put it into the pulse width uh, voltage input and we'll change how wide that pulse is in, in time at sort of vibrato frequencies and we'll end up with a very nice sound that is not vibrato but uh, certainly very pleasing so uh, check it out. I'm just going to take the linear frequency control that I just had for vibrato out of here and put it right into pulse width. And we'll see what it sounds with nothing. And then I'll add this level in order to see. And there it is. Listen to that. That can be a little bit slower in vibrato and still be uh, kind of a nice sound. Take it down into the bass range and listen to this. I think that's maybe a little too fast a modulation. I'm going to turn the modulation down um, for speed. And there it is. With that's a great bass sound. listen to it with no pulse modulation and back with it gotta have it we're gonna try a uh, modulation on uh, the filter and see if we get a little bit of a wah-wah just gonna do this real quick here basically I'm gonna take the modulation out of the pulse width I'm gonna replace the ADSR over here so I have some control over it and I'm going to put resonance up and let's see what we got just out of the chute. So like all the others, the filter matters what the speed is, you know, it's more resonance, the more obvious that is. Take the resonance down, it ends up being almost just sort of a tremolo. Speaking of that, if I change that to a ramp, this is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I think I'm making a Jacob's Ladder here. Yeah. There you go. That's uh, filter modulation. It's kind of pretty interesting. What I was thinking about here is that the vibrato is the same speed wherever you are on the keyboard. Um, at least it would be if this was out. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate that a little bit. Just okay. So I got a vibrato, a bad vibrato, but I wanted you to hear it. So. As I mentioned before, as I got down in the low frequency, that's too fast a vibrato. It's maybe okay in the high frequency. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch um, the voltage into, into the one volt per octave control of this oscillator as it would have been um, when it was a pitch oscillator. And now I'll adjust it a good frequency here. And if you look at the blinking light, then you'll see that as I go up higher, it has a higher pitch. Now that's a little bit too much of a change, so if I put it into the variable here, I can back that off a little bit. And that's better. Got a nice easy vibrato here, and these high ones, it's got a nice shake. Um, and then we, by the time I get down in these low areas, very good. Uh, slower vibrato. Now I have it on too much, so this is what it would sound like. It's a, a better setting. Okay, what I want to try to do here is I'm going to uh, patch this up to where I'm getting uh, the, the vibrato off the filter and I'm going to put it back into the oscillator here. I'm going to combine the, the vibrato and the, here we go. I'm going to take the slow, low frequency oscillator and put it into multiples. And I've patched this cord into the pulse width and I'll take out of the multiples. Um, so now I have the output of the low frequency oscillator going to both the frequency modulation and the pulse modulation. And uh, it's really, a, too fast there. Okay, there's the pulse. Add the vibrato in. combination of uh, frequency modulation and pulse width modulation. But what I want to do now is to go and take the ADSR that I'm not using anymore because I took it off the filter and have that drive. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I want to have that drive the frequency of, yeah, the frequency of the low frequency oscillator. And if I set this up right with a kind of a slow attack and a slow decay, uh, it should change the frequency of this filter. There it goes. And um, I'm make it even longer and slow this down a little bit. And you see the speed that's fr the throbbing right now? That's the vibrato speed. But I have it ramping up and then back down in order to get a uh, uh, sort of a delayed vibrato. And uh, with this far enough in and a strong enough hit, which I've got it maxed right here, so I should be able to play kind of fast and not have that. And then have it come in when I hold it. And so I think that's pretty good. comes on and then it goes off. ADSR controlled frequency modulation to create a delay effect in the vibrato and pulse width modulation. Okay, now
what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm going to make this oscillator actually be a frequency, a, a pitch oscillator, and modulate it at this higher frequency here. And we get this real interesting. The whole concept here is that we're, we are modulating the oscillator with another oscillator that's in the pitch range. And I'm going to demonstrate that again here. Um, I'll just take the oscillator, whoops, wrong one, and take the oscillator out away from this modulation, put it into the mixer, and we're going to listen to it. I'm going to turn these two oscillators uh, just an octave apart. Now, instead of listening to it, I'm going to use it to modulate this other oscillator. So, there's my primary oscillator, and I'm going to fade in that one octave lower as a modulation. And you see that it's a completely different sound. This is this, this like subharmonic distortion. And that's cool, but this gets real cool when you get off the pitch. Watch that again. I'm actually turning the frequency up in the modulation one, and we're getting kind of a lower end pitch. Control how much of it we get. If I go down the other direction, this modulation is more about how far off it is than what frequency it is. I think it's probably better bassoon than we get just with a pulse kind of signal. So that's what, the, the, that's what I wanted to get to. This is kind of a ring modulator sound, but I'm going to get into ring modulators later. And the difference is it doesn't have the primary pitch in it. So um, just listen to some jam here of what this sounds like with this. Uh, Audio frequency modulation. When I first purchased this set of modules, I also purchased one more that came with the, the starter kit, and that's the SLU limiter. And I'm going to use that for Portamento, and I just kind of figured I wouldn't have really the mini Moog sounds that I expect unless I have Portamento. So I've got this module. I haven't used it at all yet in, in this. Uh, videos. So I'm going to patch this up real quick. Basically, I'm just going to set up a, a pulse width modulation setup. Uh, so here's pulse width. I'll come off the triangle. Low frequency oscillator. Uh, square wave out. Let's see what we got. That just gives me something to start with that is a basic, nice tone. Okay, so I'm going to add in this slew limiter by going from the pitch out of the MIDI into the input of the slew, from the output of the slew into the multiple that is, that is the one I'm using for the pitch control um, right here. It's the correct one, all right. And then that should be, um, so I've got this turned off. <laughs> That's pretty pretty um, normal right there. Now I'm going to turn the slew limiter up a bit to where it's kind of extreme. Kind of sounds like the way I played trumpet in the seventh grade. So we have to be able to get to those pitches a little faster. So I'm going to just barely have it. That's 
pretty good. Maybe a little bit too slow. Listen to it across a real wide octave. This is what? One, two, three, four octaves. Turn that down just a little bit. That's very good. What I found works kind of good is if, if the direction, it's right now set on both, so it, it slews on the way up and it slews on the way down. If you set this to up only, it actually kind of sounds more like the way you might um, sing. You hardly ever slur down to a note, but you can slur up to a note. So um, we get the same slurs up. I'll put it on slow so you can hear it better. But when I go down, to that low note immediately and that's because of this uh, direction switch so here we go that's doing this because I'm holding a note down here while I'm playing so it's going back and forth between the notes since it's all monophonic Anyway, that's the slew limiter. Gotta have it. Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm Steve Averill. That was Synth Project 02 uh, modulation, pulse width, vibrato, and a little bit of portamento. Thanks, bye. <laughs>